or ask for a sign. You know, you're thinking about priesthood, ask for a wee sign. And this person suggested asking for a rose. To me, it sounded like nonsense. And a lady came into the dining room and she was carrying a rose. I hope that flower is not for me. And she says, for some reason, I, I feel I have to give it to you. Uh, as I was taking off my vestments, a, a priest came in. He was carrying a rose. As I adored the Lord in the Eucharist, he says, I clearly heard a voice, go and buy a rose and give it to Francis. A beautiful gift. I like to say I have something in common with Pope Benedict. Uh, my father being a policeman, uh, Joseph Ratzinger, his father being a policeman too. A very happy memory I have uh, was when Pope John Paul came to Ireland, uh, St. John Paul now. I was 13 years of age then in 1979, and, and that made a big impact on me. And then growing up uh, in later years, I thought I would be a policeman as well. And I thought I would, I, I would follow my father's footsteps, either that or a truck driver. There's two things I wanted to do. Before I left school, I remember there was, there was a priest came to our secondary school. Let's say I was around 16, 17, asking was anyone interested in priesthood. And I actually went, it was kind of, we were invited to go confidentially to see this priest. I went uh, and then he says, would you have any reservations? And I says, yes, I would like to get married or celibacy. So he kind of says, leave it for a few years. I dismissed it out of my mind totally. After leaving school, I, I did truck driving for about four years. Uh, and then I went into the taxi business in, in Dublin, the capital of Ireland. Uh, I did that for 10 years. I often say I drove people to drink for a living. I made good money. Uh, I bought a home in Dublin at a very young age. At 22, I bought my own house. But there's always something uh, in, in, even when I was working, I was seeing another side of life, really. Uh, people out partying and drinking and, and all that goes with it. I, I felt there was an emptiness within myself for a long time. There was this, uh, I felt there, there had to be something more. And eventually the faith I, I, in Ireland, that it is as, as generally in Europe, uh, was diminishing and the practice of the faith, the family prayer, uh, rosary, it was all diminishing. And there was the big question then, is there a God at all? Uh, and it wasn't really cool anymore. Uh, and really the peer pressure was to wander away. There's always something in me searching for happiness. Uh, I ended up going astray then in my 20s. I had material things. I began off being a full-time taxi driver and a part-time drinker. I ended up being a part-time taxi driver and a full-time drinker, having a serious car accident then in, 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 when I was 27. And not unlike St. Ignatius of Loyola, uh, he had a serious accident as well, ended up in hospital for a long time. I was sharing my story and he says a taxi driver uh, who got lost in Dublin and found his way in Medjugorje. And that's what happened to me, really. 1993, I had this serious accident, really changed my life. I ended up then, thanks be to God uh, and Our Lady, uh, somebody mentioned Medjugorje. That is central to my vocation journey. Uh, the apparitions there, beginning in 1981 in, in, in communist Yugoslavia, Our Lady appearing to six little children uh, with a wonderful message uh, to tell them that God exists and to give hope to humanity. That was the first message in Medjugorje. Uh, I had a huge turnaround there. I went to confessions. I remember maybe the first time in my life, a proper confession. Uh, I, I didn't feel I was worthy even to go to confession. I, I was terrified even to go to confession in 1995 at 29 years of age. I says, how can I go into a box and tell a man my sins? I, I felt very guilty and ashamed of things I did, my madness, my stupidity. I remember coming back uh, to, to Dublin after that accident and getting involved with a, a wee prayer meeting, a charismatic prayer meeting 
in Dublin called the Emmanuel Community. Uh, and there was about 12 of us on this retreat, and there was a priest there as well. Uh, I didn't know at this stage I would ever be a priest, but I was praying for healing. Uh, after the car accident, I had a dislocated hip. I shattered my hip very badly, the pelvis. Uh, I had pins in my hip, and also my sciatic nerve was badly damaged so that I had a drop foot. Uh, that was part of the injury I had. I couldn't lift up my, my right foot. It was paralyzed. There was a, a time for praying for healing. Uh, the Blessed Sacrament was exposed and they prayed individually over the people. And they prayed over me anyway. And so I wasn't asking the Lord. I just, I says, healed and touched my heart. That was the big healing I was looking for. I wasn't really looking for physical healing because I could walk with a slight disability, a limp. And there was some lady at, at, at it was a, a big kind of a room or a, 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 and a lady said, uh, I heard a voice, but I knew it was the Lord speaking to me and not this lady. Lift up your tired hands and straighten your trembling knees and keep walking on the straight path so that your lame foot may not be disabled, but instead be healed. And I asked, asked this lady, you know, what was it she read? Uh, she said, no, she just read it at random. It was Hebrews 12, 12. That's the exact injury I have after a car accident I had a few years ago. What time is it? His grandfather asked him. My father said to his granddad, it's 10 o'clock. If it's 10 o'clock, it's time to say the rosary. And he closed his eyes then and he left this, this world. You had your accident on the night of the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, that morning of June at 10 past 1 a.m. Uh, he had it written in his diary four years uh, previous. At 10 past 1 in the morning, you had your accident. Uh, and we looked at the clock on the wall, uh, and the clock on the wall, it was exactly 10 past 1. God is watching us. He's been waiting for this second to see our reaction. It's time to say the rosary. And we went on our knees in thanksgiving and we prayed a rosary. I says, I says the Lord is watching the two of us now. I, I told my dad what happened the day before at uh, this prayer meeting. And he was really excited. Uh, you, you hear about the, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, uh, how their hearts burned as he explained scriptures to them. And we spoke for a long time about this year. And I didn't know God could speak to me personally. I thought God created the universe, but he didn't know that I existed. I was looking for healing of the heart. The Lord wants us to give us to complete healing. He knows everything, even the, the wounds of our body, our souls, everything. And as he opened up the diary, he said, you had your accident on the night of the 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, that morning of June at 10 past 1 a.m. Uh, he had it written in his diary four years uh, previous. At 10 past 1 in the morning, you had your accident. Uh, and we both turned around and there was a clock on the wall uh, and we looked at the clock on the wall uh, and the clock on the wall, it was exactly 10 past 1 in the morning uh, when my father opened up the diary. Uh, and when I had the accident, four years later to the very, very second, I was wondering, uh, was did God exist or not? And our Lord confirmed it very clearly through the scriptures and the very second uh, that I had my car accident, he confirmed it uh, to me. Uh, and as Hebrews 4.12 says, the word of God is alive and active. So our Lord spoke to me very clearly uh, that night uh, and to my father. And uh, we were filled with joy then. I said, imagine the Lord is waiting for this moment to happen for the last four hours. We were chatting like two, two young schoolboys. Uh, and then when this happened, I said, now God is watching us. He's been waiting for this second to see our reaction. And we went on our knees in thanksgiving and we prayed a rosary. I said, I said the Lord is watching the two of us now. I got the grace in 1996 to walk the sober path. Uh, and that was really uh, walking uh, daily with our Lord, with Our Lady, holding Our Lady's hand with the rosary. I remember going to Mass every day, every day, and every asking our Lord to come to me in the Eucharist to strengthen my heart. 
uh, and to keep me strong, uh, and for the grace of sobriety, one day at a time, from one Eucharist to the next. Uh, that's the way I did it, but I knew our Lord was truly present in the Eucharist. What a gift, God truly coming to us in each and every Mass. I had a wonderful conversion and healing, uh, going regularly to confession then as well. Uh, the call to priesthood came uh, around 1998. I was 32 years of age. Uh, I admired priests always when I was a young boy, being an altar server in South Dublin. Uh, there was two youngish priests there, and they were always very welcome in our homes. So I've, I have I've great memories of, of two very good priests and me serving at the altar. And, and it was a very happy time growing up. I never thought I could be a priest. I never thought I was worthy to be a priest. And I still know that today. Uh, that I'm not worthy, but the Lord uh, called me anyway. He doesn't choose the qualified, he qualifies the call. And it was something I resisted for a while. I, naturally, I wanted to get married. Uh, and then I had to discern this vocation. My, my father was a, a role model for me, a good man and a good moral man uh, in every way and a good family man. And he was very keen for me to be a priest. I was not interested in it, but he could see something in me that maybe that I should consider that call. Uh, when you're called to, a to be a priest, it's a difficult, difficult uh, decision to answer that call. If you are really called to be a priest, it's also a difficult decision to ignore that call. Somebody said to me, before you go to Medjugorje, or ask for a sign when you go to Medjugorje, you know, you're thinking about priesthood, ask for a wee sign. And this person suggested asking for a rose, that, that if you're to be a priest, that somebody gives you a rose. To me, it sounded like nonsense. Uh, I wasn't impressed really, but in the back of my mind, I thought maybe, you know, well, no harm. So I didn't really take it serious. And I was there about three days. And I remember we were having an evening meal and a lady came in that was in the group and she was carrying a rose. And she came into the, to the dining room and she says, I don't know, she said to me, but she came to me with this rose. And she says, for some reason, I, I feel I have to give it to you. And she said she was down the town in Medjugorje that afternoon and somebody came to her and gave her a rose. And she says, for some reason, I, th I feel I have to give it to you. I got my rose. I didn't really want to get the rose, but uh, that was the wee sign. And it, one of the many, many signs uh, that I was called to be a priest. I went into seminary at one stage. I was close and I discerned marriage. Even in seminary, I took a year out. Uh, and discerned the vocation of marriage. I discerned with a, a good young lady, and she was asking me, would you be happy being married? Would you be content or fulfilled? And so it was really a gift even that year out. So thanks be to God and Our Lady, uh, I, I eventually got ordained. I became a priest. I got ordained here in the cathedral in Letterkenny and Donegal. A happy day for me and my family. I have five siblings, four brothers and one sister. And thank God it was really a wonderful journey and a miraculous journey as such. There was great celebration. I was asked to give a, a little testimony in, in the Marian Eucharistic Shrine of Knock here in Ireland, uh, the long and winding road to priesthood. Uh, and I gave a little nice, t uh, well, I gave a testimony. It was around November 2008. I was only ordained about a year and a half in Knock in Ireland. Uh, giving witness to our Lord and Our Lady and Medjugorje as well, uh, and, and thanking God, thanking Our Lady as well for God's goodness to me. Through all, uh, he was looking out for me. He was seeking me. And shortly after that there, it was in January 2009, uh, my mother and father uh, went to stay in a hotel in Mayo for the weekend. And I drove down uh, the next day to this hotel in Westport, and my father and myself were standing in the reception area looking at this beautiful picture of Our Lady and of Pope John Paul. A lady came over beside me. Where are you staying tonight? I said, I have no plans. I didn't know, but she was the owner of the hotel. And she says, follow me. And she heard me giving my testimony uh, in knock. 
So she took me up to the presidential suite, the executive suite in this, this lovely hotel, and she says, this is yours, you can stay here, you're very welcome, you can stay here. Uh, it was like uh, a scene from a movie, the bathroom and a jacuzzi, a pillar poster bed with all these linen drapes coming down. It was something you'd see in a movie, and I just thought to myself, I woke up in the morning, this is wrong, I wasn't ordained for this, and the voice said, but it's your birthday was my birthday that morning. I didn't even remember it. I was 43 that year. So Our Lady knew she's the mother of all mothers. She doesn't forget. That's how well God knows us, how well God knows me. Everybody, uh, it's one of the sayings in Medjugorje, Our Lady says, if you knew how much I love you, you'd weep for joy. A few weeks afterwards, my father got ill and he was rushed to hospital. I was chatting to him and I visited him in the hospital in Dublin. My own father used to come to me occasionally saying, bless me, father, I have sinned. He came to me saying them words in confession. We were very close. We're still very, very close. Can I anoint you? And, and he says, yes. And I anointed him anyway. And he wept then. He was a big man, a policeman. And he got a little bit emotional, he says. He says, it's such a wonderful thing and a beautiful thing to be anointed uh, by a priest. Such a blessing. But he says, to be anointed by your own son is even more wonderful. And he says, can I hold your hands? He had big hands. He, he, used, he was a policeman. He used to do a lot of gardening. So he embraced my two hands into his hands like that there. He says, your hands, the priest's hands, are like the womb of Mary. Every day, our Lord becoming flesh in the hands of the priest, our Lord saying, this is my body, this is my blood. A lovely, a lovely, and that was the last time that I seen my father in this world. It was a blessing, a real blessing. Uh, and, and a few days afterwards, he got out of hospital, he had another turn, and he passed away in a very serene way. He died at three o'clock. Uh, in a very, very, uh, it was really providential how it happened uh, in a beautiful way. Uh, and that was in March in 2009. And I had planned to go to him uh, or with, with my own father to Medjugorje that September. Uh, it, it, he used to normally go on his own with his brother, my uncle. And he was going to go that September to Medjugorje with me. We had planned, I'd never been there with him uh, as a seminarian or a priest, but I wanted to go uh, in thanksgiving. I went to Medjugorje, as I always did, thanking God, thanking Our Lady, praying for grace and strength. And I was there for a week, and I shared the story as well, that normally, and well, I was meant to be there with my, my, my dad, uh, who had a great love of Our Lady and a great love of the priesthood. Uh, and I was there for a week, uh, and at the end of the week, anyway, I remember it was one of the last Masses. I was celebrating the Mass, and all the priests came into the sacristy uh, as I was taking off my vestments. A priest came in the far door, the far side of the sacristy. He was carrying a rose. I hope that flower's not for me. He says, well, actually it is. Uh, and he says, and he says, I was in adoration. And he says, as I adore the Lord in the Eucharist, he says, I clearly heard a voice. And he says, it was your father's voice. And your father said, go and buy a rose and give it to Francis. Uh, so a beautiful gift. Uh, and that's my father. He wasn't with me, but he was with me in spirit, but also a confirmation uh, of, of that call to priesthood. Uh, maybe 10 years earlier, uh, he said, you are called to priesthood. You have the call. He felt that deep down and confirming that as well. The wonder of our faith. God is so, so close to us. He wants to confirm us and affirm us on all our pilgrim journey. Just a few years ago in 2015, uh, on March the 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, a beautiful feast day, I, I was called to hospital, tests were done, uh, and I was told I had bowel cancer. It's Our Lady's Feast of the Annunciation, uh, it's the date she said yes to our Lord, uh, uh, to God's will, and I knew if Our Lady was in it, I'd be all right. I had signal graces before even I got the cancer. I remember one 
lady in the congregation I was saying Mass uh, in the parish I was in, and she came to me a couple of days later, uh, and, and, and she says, when you were saying Mass, she heard a voice, this lady heard a voice saying, tell the priest to trust in the Lord. Uh, and I knew the Lord was working then, and it was a, about eight weeks later, uh, I was told I had bowel cancer. I had to have chemotherapy as well then for six months. Uh, and part of my healing was one, to trust in the Lord, uh, to receive him every day in the Eucharist, to trust in him that he is the healer of body and soul. Uh, and I prayed and I says, unite my heart with the heart of Jesus in every mass, my blood with the blood of Jesus. And also I said 100 masses uh, for the holy souls in purgatory. Uh, and that is linked with the apparition site here in Knock in Ireland. I had an experience with the Holy Souls in Purgatory as well in the parish I was in, and I knew that there were many masses needed for the souls. So part of my healing for cancer uh, was the Eucharist, the Rosary, uh, but also praying for the souls in Purgatory. Uh, but the main thing uh, was to trust in the Lord, that he was overall and all would be good. Every day, our Lord saying, this is my body, this is my blood. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in them. That's a profound mystery and a wonder. Uh, and I thank God every day uh, for that wonder. And I know myself, I know my weakness, and I know that I have to be dependent on God. Uh, and, and it's not, it's a dependency of love. I remember my father always sharing this story uh, uh, when he was a young boy at 18 years of age. When my father was 18, his own grandfather uh, was passing, leaving this world. His own granddaddy, my father's granddaddy, was leaving this world. My father used to say he was the only one in the room with him. Uh, and, and his grandfather asked him, he says to his own grandson, he says, Hugh, he says, what time is it? His grandfather asked him, uh, and my, my, my father said to his granddad, it's 10 o'clock. He says, well, Huey, he says, if it's 10 o'clock, it's time to say the rosary. Uh, and he closed his eyes then and he left this, this world. His last words, uh, that was 1948, a long, long time ago, my great grandfather, but saying to his own grandson, it's time to say the rosary, his final words. I have my grandfather's beads here now, and he gave these beads to my father. Uh, and my father, uh, about a year before he left this world, gave me his rosary beads, wanting that connection. In 2019, uh, four years after the original diagnosis, I had, to, I had secondary cancer, uh, and that was, it had spread into the lung. And again, I needed surgery, uh, and I was another six months chemotherapy, uh, and another 100 masses for the Holy Souls. Uh, but I knew I had signal graces uh, that the Lord was in it. Suffering uh, is the work of God. That's how he's redeemed humanity, through the cross. And we can participate uh, in redemptive, redemptive suffering or healing of ourselves and others. And we receive many, many graces uh, when we unite even our little sacrifices, prayers or, or suffering with our Lord. John Vianney said, the priesthood is about the love of the heart of Jesus. And I found that in so many, many ways, uh, and, and, and the heart of Jesus loving us. Uh, a lot of my journey is, is Our Lady uh, and the Sacred Heart, uh, very much uniting with those two hearts. Uh, I pray that my heart always unites with Our Lady's Immaculate Heart and the Sacred Heart as well. Heart of Jesus, Heart of Jesus, burning with love for me, inflame my heart, inflame my heart with love, with love for thee. 
O sacred heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in thee. Are you searching for purpose of life? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.